actually listen to it at work and I don't dare to listen to it before I sleep. Noel is the king of Singapore paranormal. <laughs> You're listening to Haunted Hour, real ghost stories from real people. She could actually see see things and that freaked her out. The minute I turned off the light, she screamed. She was like, ow! The following night, the same thing happened. The music continued playing. And then I felt hair like uh, sweeping my left cheek up and down. This is your host, Noel Boyd. Hey everyone, we are live and this is Haunted Hour. We'd like to wish all of you a Happy New Year. It's 2021. Yeah, Happy New Year to all Haunted Hours viewers and listeners out there. Yeah, man. My name is Noel Boyd. My name is Indra Sahib. Yeah, today's going to be a, a really nice app, I think. Uh, I think we built it pretty nicely. Uh, with us in the studio, we have Joanna Ash and she's from Sun Goddess Tarot. Yeah, welcome, Madam Joanna. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, there's a lot that we're going to speak about today, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but before we get into that, we'd like to thank our sponsor. It's Get Alive Seafood. Now, mm-hmm. guys, if you're home on Saturdays and you feel like having a uh, nice cookout session and it involves really good seafood, mm-hmm. uh, give them a visit. It's getaliveseafood.com. They have stuff like Asari clams, Boston lobsters. They have oysters, mud crabs. Of course, because Singaporeans just love chili crab and, and yeah. pepper crab, right? All right, so give them a visit. It's getaliveseafood.com. They are also on Instagram and they are on Facebook. Mm. Yep. <laughs> so, you, look, you look very excited, you know? Of course, man. Yeah, it's, man. The, it's, a, it's a new year. It's a new year. It's a new beginning. Mm-hmm. Let's throw away 2020, man. See, I don't know whether we can do that. Why? I don't know whether... whether 2021 is going to be better than than the last year because the last year was was, mm. was horrible for a lot of people. Yeah, true. Right? True. So yeah. I don't know if 2021 is going to be any better, but maybe you can give us some insight yeah. later on. Yeah, can no problem. <laughs> okay, nice. You see, with all that hype that we just did, mm. right? So everything's very positive now. We're going to go on into our first segment for the evening, and it's terrifying trivia. And I'm so sorry I got to do this because this one. It's not very good. Yeah, man. Terrifying trip. Yeah. Yeah. I've been to this place and uh, it's called Santika. It's in Bangkok, Thailand. Mm -hmm. Now, on the 1st of January 2009, 66 people were killed in a fire. And in this fire as well, 222 people were injured. So the fire swept through the nightclub during the New Year's Eve celebration. And get this, the band that was on stage, they're called Burn. Okay, uh, and another coincidence is that the party was named Santika's last night. Now, the fire broke out at 12.35 a.m. And citizens of 13 countries were among the dead and injured. And, you know, two Singaporeans perished in the fire. Now, no official cause, you know, has been announced for um, how the fire started. But people know that it started on the roof and then the ceiling of the club caught on fire. Uh, some say maybe it was the fireworks that was outside, you know, uh, the premises. And they had about a thousand guests that were that were in the club. And this includes employees. And they only had one exit because the other exit at the back was always locked. I see. And that's because they didn't want people ordering their drinks and then not paying. Right. So so it was locked when the fire started. People were rushing to get out from Planning just up. one entrance. And you got yeah. like a thousand people mm. in there. Um, and then they also discovered that this nightclub didn't have the license, right? It didn't have a license to be a club. It, the, the only thing that was supposed to be there was um, like they only allow homes, mm. right? Um, and after that, it became one of the most haunted locations uh, in Bangkok itself. People were here screaming, they were here shouting. And it always happens about that time, about 12.35 a.m. Now, I've been to, to Santika and you're looking at some of the photos that, that uh, I took when I was there. And man, like, I think it was only like the first few minutes that I entered this, this place. And then I just could feel the energy was different. I could feel like people running around me. Where, by the way, where, where is this photo taken? Where? Um, okay. So in Thailand, they have these little um, spirit houses hmm. where, where they put the offerings. And hmm. uh, in Thailand, what they love to do is to put out drinks. So I think I've got a photo of the next one after this. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so it's these sweet drinks that they leave out for the entities. And then I remember standing here 
And then I asked, is there anybody here? And then the wind picked up, but mm. the wind picked up only in that area. So the trees around me, right, um, didn't move except for, for the one that's in front of this altar. Wow. And then just when I was about to leave, um, I was really sad because I felt so much sadness in the place. And I said um, that, you know, if you are here and, um, you know, I, I'm really sorry for what you went through. And I, I hope that you find peace one day. Mm. And then I heard this female voice. It was really loud. Mm. I don't know what she said, but then the camera, my camera, my, my camcorder uh, managed to pick up this. Wow. Yeah. So it's like this lady was behind me when I was trying to, to communicate with them. Mm. Yeah. And I, I speak more about it in my book. So I cannot tell you too much because if not, my wife is going to, you're going to tell me off when I get home. Because <laughs> I'm always giving spoilers. Mm. So no spoilers today, yeah. But this is definitely one of like the uh, the saddest places I've been to. Is, is that connection really strong uh, during yeah. that time? No. Yeah. Is that the most, like the, the strongest connection that you ever felt before? Yeah, I think also because um, I, I, I really felt for all those people because mm. they went there to have a good time. Yeah. And then something really tragic happened. And then, it's not supposed to happen. It's just because people are greedy and then there's a lot of corruption, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of innocent souls. Huh? Yeah. Mm. And, and how do you let go of, of a loved one that perished just like that? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, have you guys been to, to this place in Bangkok, the Santika Club? No. But when I look at this picture, there's a, I feel a lot of pain in my tummy. Ah, yeah, mm. my ba- and my my lower tummy is the base chakra is just completely impacted, you know. So I can I can feel that. Mm. Um, I think the vibes of the place is so negative because people are just um, you know have, lives have been robbed. Yeah, you know, so quite suddenly um, at at a time like this, you know, you talk about New Year's Eve, New Year, you know, people t- are talking about new beginnings. You're yeah, dealing with deaths. Yeah. So I I, I feel that. And once the base chakra is 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 impacted, we, we are talking about things to do with grounding. There's no grounding, um, and um, the souls are, are are still are still there. Yeah, mm. definitely. You know, and I think they don't know where where to go. And I I also think that prior to me going there, I think a lot of them did not know that they've passed on. Yep. Mm. Un- until you know, I because. I think in my intro, I was saying stuff like, you know, I, I don't know whether you're dead, but, you know, unfortunately, I have to tell you that Mm-mm. you are no longer alive. Yeah. Yeah. And that you need to to move on to a better place. Mm-mm. Yeah. I think that that's why there was all that excitement and, you know, maybe they were angry. Maybe they they just needed somebody to help them move on. But yeah. um, I, I remember asking around the paranormal groups, right, in, in, in Bangkok, like, would you follow me? Because mm. I didn't want to do it alone. Um, also because of like safety stuff and all, right? And they know the place better than you. Eh? Yeah. And yeah. then they say, no, um, let's not go there. Let's go somewhere else. Oh, they did tour. Yeah. So then <laughs> the more people told me that, then the more like, no, I'm going to do this. Mm. So I got my hotel bellboy. Mm. I brought him up for drinks and then I convinced him to follow me. That's a good way. Just, that's, to, that's a bribe. <laughs> yeah. And then he agreed. And then when, when I was in Bangkok this year in Feb, mm. uh, I met up with him again and, you know, just to thank him one more time. Mm. Yeah. For being part of that experience. And, you know, yeah. Is he quite reluctant? Mm, yeah. Then, then he was very reluctant, mm. but then the more beers he had, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then, then it was pretty easy. After yeah, that. True, yeah. True. Then I think he woke up the next day realizing that, that he can't back out. <laughs> yeah. So both, if you're watching, man, uh, I dedicate this app to you, bro. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Okay, we're going to move on to a segment called Real or Fake. Now, you yeah. let us know in the comments what you think, okay? This is... Um, okay, let, let me give you a, a, a short brief. This video was taken by a pilot uh, at the BKK airport. Is the... Um, how do you pronounce this? Huh? Bangkok? Sukam- no, Suva... Suva... Su- Suva Rambubi? Yeah, wow. that's it. That's why I needed you to be on this app. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm glad I'm useful. <laughs> yeah. So you see uh, the arrow bridge, right? Mm. And then you see these people just walking out. But there's no plane there. And a lot of these these things that are walking, they look translucent. Who shot this video, bro? The pilot. The pilot, huh? Yeah, he was um, in his plane waiting for passengers to board. And then he noticed these people just walking. And then he's like, 
where they're coming from because there's no plane there. Mm-hmm. So this was uh, um, on news channels all around Thailand. Wow. Yeah. Look at that. Creepy, man. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be in the pilot position, man. <laughs> yeah. Knowing that he has to, to fly the plane after mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Or, or maybe he just landed. I don't know. But what do you all think of uh, of what you just seen? Wow, he looks pretty real for me, man. Mm. Yep. But I mean, you're the guy that that always has a lot to say, and you, you, you don't think <laughs> no, a lot of stuff is real. For like from from our previous episode, right? Mm. I always like uh, criticize yeah. on the video that you show. Mm-hmm. Uh, mainly, I think is quite fake. Mm-hmm. But looking at this video, I mean, it's very hard for me to actually say it is fake. Mm. Because yeah, I mean, looking at uh, it, it can be it can be effects. It can be like uh, camera tricks. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. It's, it's it's very hard. And looking at that that kind of uh, aura in that very airport, right? Mm-hmm. If if you all notice in that very video, right at the below part of the aero bridge, right? Yeah. There's a there's a group of like shadowed shadowed figures actually unloading baggage there, right? Yeah, I, mm. it, it looked something like that. Mm. But I know that this airport was built on a ancient cemetery. I, so I don't know whether there's, there's any link ah. to that. Yeah. Um, what do you think about that footage? Can you show that again? Can sure. sure. Let's hold on. So there you have it. There you see all these people walking out mm. um, or along the Arab Bridge. And there's no plane there, so I can't ascertain for sure. <laughs> to be honest. What's your your gut feel about this? But the the passengers, if if they are, if they were really passengers, right? Mm-hmm. They are not carrying any bags. I yeah. can see their bags. Huh. Yeah, I think maybe for some, some of them, I am. Oh yeah, if you zoom prone, in, yeah, yeah, correct, correct, correct. I'm prone to think that it's not real. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Mm. You see, when I um watched that uh, pictures of Santika just now, mm. I. My stomach hurts so badly. When I watch this, I don't feel the hurt in my end anywhere. So I'm not sure. Maybe because I'm not picking it up. Mm. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. That's interesting. Wow. Hmm. So, so now, if you don't feel any hurt in your stomach, what kind of energy you feel? Actually, when you look at this nothing. video, with Santika, I feel it. Mm. But, but with this one, not really. Like mm. I said, sometimes I, I I can pick up the energy. Sometimes I can't. It depends. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Huh. wow. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the, mm, mm, mm. you know, we have really no idea who took that video. Yeah, true. And, you know, a lot of videos go viral yeah, right. and, and there's, you know, it's fake. Mm, right? Mm, yeah. You just want to make money out of it. Huh? Of course, man. <laughs> yeah. The more views, the better, right? Yep. So I'm eager to know, is that fake or not? Yeah, I mean. So let's let, let's give our verdict here. I, I, I really don't know. I, I really don't know. I, I, I feel that it's there's just too many entities, I guess. Like, usually, mm-hmm. like, you see one or two pop up, but yeah. this one is, like, a big group. Yeah, true. Yeah, and then, yeah, they, I don't know. But I really it's, don't it's, know. it's hard to deny uh, for us to actually, de- I mean, it's hard for us to deny this as well. Mm. I mean, it can, be, it can be real. Yeah. It, right? It can, it can be real. It could be. Yeah. Um, you guys watching right now live, what do yeah. you think? Do you think this is real or do you think it's fake? Post your comment on the comment section below. Yeah, we got oh, we got a good few people watching. We got Jad Ali. Oh, If you guys don't know who Jad Ali is, Mr. man, Jad oh my god, Ali, yeah. legend, legend, the OG <laughs> of Singapore. Yeah, I, I I love him so much. Yeah, He's got man. an amazing voice. I miss watching you sing, bro. One thing that I love about Jad Ali when mm. he sing the rock genre. Mm-hmm. Wow, it just blow your mind, man. Yeah. Mm. If you're watching this, thank you, Mr. Jad Ali. Yeah, man. And then we got Anand Singh watching. We got Eddie. We got Ronald from Europe. Mm-hmm. Okay, all these people watching. Okay, let's let's talk to Joanna. Let's find out more mm-hmm. about about what she does. Okay, so I think it would be silly to ask you, but I need to ask you: Do you believe in the existence of ghosts? Uh yes. Um, I just don't call them that. You know, just spirits, right? Spirits. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I do believe in the existence of spirits around us. You know. Um. In fact, I believe sometimes, um, uh, you know, 
they, they are there for a purpose. Some of them, you know, they can act as your guide. Uh, mm-hmm. Some of them, um, they don't. If you come across a spirits that have a negative vibe, you just need to understand that you need to just stay away from and you can feel it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, you can, you can sense it. It's quite easy to sense it. Wow. Mm, do you think these negative um, spirits are of demonic form or, or what's your take on it? I've never had an experience of that. Mm. Um, uh, but I, I do believe that does exist. I mean, I, I'm, a, you know, I'm quite steep in my faith, you know. Um, so uh, I kind of feel that uh, they exist uh, for a purpose, you know, um, because good exists. Yeah. Right. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. When there's good, there is bad as well. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you tell us any um, of your your encounters with the spirits? Okay. So, one of the earliest ones was um, maybe about a few years ago. Mm-mm. And that was during um, the Seven Month Festival of Hungry Ghost. And, you know, I had a dream one night and I dreamt of a family of four. I still can remember quite clearly it was a father, mother and a daughter, maybe about 12, 12, 13-ish. Um, and the son was about maybe about six or seven. And I, you know, I kind of, in my dream, I said, what do you want? You know, who are you? And the fellow said to me in Mandarin, and you know, I can't, I'm very, I got F in Man, in, in Chinese at school. Hmm. He said in Mandarin, you know, um, may your Fu Tuan, which means I don't have any clothes to wear. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh. So I was, I thought it was quite funny. So I, the next day when I woke up, I called my mom, I said, um, so silly I dreamt of this dream you know what 4D numbers you want to buy because I dreamt these fellas um, said they don't have any clothes to wear my mom got worried mm. my mom said oh, oh dear let me consult your grandmother so consulted my grandmother my grandmother said better go and buy those um, you know uh, dress paper and um, bags of paper clothes and things like that for, for the spirits and mm. burn it I said you gotta be kidding I'm a Catholic I don't do things like that mm. My whole family is we are Catholics, and right. my grandmother said, "No, you have to do it." So, we went to buy it. I remember I went to the guy at the, the shop, and I said, "I had to explain to him what my I dreamt," and he was quite nonchalant. He says, "Oh, I've I've heard that, heard of that before. Don't worry." And he gave me uh, two green bags and two red bags. The two green bags were for for male, mm-hmm. and the two red bags were for female. And they were. They asked me to go and burn it. So my husband and I went to find a nearest dustbin somewhere that is far away, and my neighbors don't stare at us. Um, and we tried to to burn the bags, and after that, I I I I didn't uh, get any encounters anymore. But I was quite curious, so I used my cards to kind of communicate. Mm-hmm. Uh, my tarot cards to communicate to see why is it of all things. Of all people, why do you come and approach me? Because, you know, that scared the daylights out of me. And I think I found out that when they said that I don't have clothes to wear, what it, what it was meant is that when the family had passed on, they passed on quite suddenly and uh, there were things that they have not finished doing. Right. So the words, I don't have clothes to wear, means I cannot enter into the other world because I have not completed anything I've, I, I don't know what to do I don't have anything to that's proper to be able to cross into the light yeah mm. yeah so with that knowledge I kind of said my own Catholic prayers mm. for that family wow mm. yeah. Mm. yeah probably there's there's a there's a reason why that thing happened yep. and, I mean and there's a that, that dream happened to you I think there's a there's a good reason for, for, for it a good end, a good ending lah. Yep. Yeah, a good exactly. Ending, I would say. Yeah, mm. so I always believe that when, you know, when there are encounters like this, there's always a purpose. Yeah. So if mm, there's a purpose yeah. to help, why not? Mm. Yeah, mm, and, nice. and and you have the ability to help. If I could, yes. Yeah. If I could, it, you know. Okay, so just to 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 inform everybody, uh, how we met, right, was through a football event. So I was the MC, mm. and then you were sitting next to this. Um, a uh, former international player uh, Lee Man Hon Lee Man Hon yeah so oh. Lee Man Hon is a darling right legend, my, legend. one of my favorite players yeah and then he calls me over and then we start talking and then I sat in between in between y'all right and then I started talking to Joanna mm. and 
And then Joanna started telling me things about my life. Yes. Yeah, things that I don't share with people. I don't put on uh, social media. I mean, I don't really like Mm-mm. social media to begin with and I'm yeah. hardly on online. Mm-mm. And she starts telling me stuff. And then I start g- getting very emotional because uh, it was... I mean, I was going through a, a really tough time. Mm-mm. Not knowing when the bad times will end. Right? So then when I spoke to her... Um, and then she was telling me stuff about like, my childhood and then about my, my late father. And then, uh, yeah, so there was, I was very emotional. And then we, we carry on texting after that on WhatsApp. Yes. And um, yeah, she gave me hope. Wow. Yeah. This lady is really, really special. Wow. Yeah. To me. Yeah. You're really special. So I, I don't feel there's any gift. It's just that I pick up energies. And if it's energy that I'm, I'm kind of compelled to say to someone, I will mm. say it. Mm-mm. So sometimes my... My husband goes with me to shopping. He says, you have to stop your Long Island medium practices <laughs> because you're frightening everybody. And, mm. you know, I, I, I said, I can't help it. It's just that if I, I meet somebody and I pick up energy, if I, if, I, if I need to say it, I'm compelled to say it, I'll, I'll do that. And that was with Noel. I felt I was quite comfortable enough to share that with him. And, and it was a message that I had to share with him, mm. you know. But I think, sorry to inject, but I think it's not easy to be your husband also. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I mean, <laughs> he has the real life experience of, of how you feel the energy towards him, right? Yes. But yeah. I think it's 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 it's, it's something a uh, good given ability that you are able to actually feel all this energy, mm. not just to help people, mm. actually to channel yourself with the right people. Yep. Am I right yeah. to say that? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Definitely. Mm-mm. Yeah. So if I can help, why why not? I mean, even like when I was on the way here. Um, uh, just with Noel mm-hmm. you know um, in, in a taxi on the way here I just kind of said a little prayer before coming here and that little prayer was whatever message I could give today to help Noel mm-hmm. please let me help Noel oh, wow. that was what I said thank you so that way I've already set my intention yeah you know as mm-hmm. I approach here so that the intention is for my is for the authentic good mm-hmm. so once you come into a space with the authentic good you know yeah. that you're surrounded with light so like for Noel, I, I, I know that um, he's in a crossroad. I know that he's making choices um, and he'll be making choices next year, I think, because he's come through a very difficult couple of years. Mm-hmm. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Next year or, or this year? Last two years, you were come, going through a very difficult yeah. last two years. So mm-hmm. I think you're making choices. I think perhaps starting from, from now, I think to next year, you'll be, you, you, you need to kind of look at giving up something in order to gain something. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. the thing, but I don't know what yeah. I'm trying to give up or what I'm going to yeah. give up. Yeah. So the second bit, when I said that to you, I think I, I did have a little conversation with you about that, which we couldn't pin what it was. Mm-hmm. So I went, I ran my, my the, reason, the, the usual way I, I kind of channel a little bit is to, to run my hands across my chakras mm. to, to help feel what yours is and mm-hmm. where the conflict is. And I think the conflict is within your heart and your throat chakra. There are things that you are not able to express and is stuck and is connected to your heart because of um, what had happened to you in the past you know okay. where you suffered disappointment hurt and and, and pain and, mm. and, and and loss you know mm-hmm. so um, when it's linked to that it's almost like um, telling me that then for you to express it out it would be a very important thing to, to, to communicate to someone that you trust mm-hmm. and to let go of that so that you can open new doors right Okay, mm. but I think I need to figure out what that is because you know this head of mine is always in a mess. Yeah, yeah, because I'm thinking of so many things and I'm doing so many things. Yeah, there are a lot of times I don't know what I'm thinking about. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, I'll just sit there and go like, what? What's going on? You're just confused, bro. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the the one thing I wanted to ask you was: mm. was there anything in the past that you, um, because the word hastiness comes out in my mind now mm-hmm. um, anything that you have done hastily that there was some regret I, I think a lot because um, one I, big thing oh one big thing I don't know yeah so think about that because that's the one thing that you need to kind of almost repair mm-hmm. you know that, that, that whole feeling of guilt and of loss and that um, uh, disappointment oh yeah. okay Mm. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I think it's gonna take him yeah. some time, lah. No, I, I, I think I know. You what think you know what is? Yeah. yeah, I feel you know what it is. Wow. Yeah, it's just that you 
But I said it's blocking you because that's why I said the throat and your heart is blocking, uh, chakra is blocking because you haven't addressed that. So mm. when you haven't addressed it, your it, your mind is not addressing it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Sorry to, I, I have a quick question. Sure. Just now when you said about intention, right? Mm. I mean, definitely every good act starts with a good intention. Yeah. Does the intention part plays a very big role to to process that positive energy? Definitely. Mm. Uh, 200%. Okay. Yeah. You have to always, I mean, like even for Noel, he's unknowingly, he, when he walked into Santika, okay. he hasn't said it out, but his intention was, I want to see what is there, so if I can help, I will. Mm. Yeah. But he hasn't said it. Mm. But that was already the intention he said. Mm. That's the reason why a spirit has confronted you. I see. And, say, and, 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 and kind of, you know, showed you that, that unhappiness. Yeah. So yeah. With, that all pos- with, with all that positivity, it opened up all the doors to, yes. to, to, man, to, to whatever he wants to seek for. La. Yes. Okay, wow. Mm. That's nice. And mm. it's, it's, it's not a gift, right? Everyone can do that. Everyone. Mm. Because I believe that anyone has a level of intuition. Mm. They just need to trust the intuition enough to leverage that for the better good, right? Yeah, but I think a lot of people are, are afraid to. Yeah, yeah they because they, they don't know what's going to happen, right? Yeah. Mm. yeah. And they're skeptical too. Wow. I mean, if you ask my husband, my husband is really skeptical about this. He, he, <laughs> he, he thinks it's just like, you know, woo-woo stuff. But the, the fact is, it is true. Everyone has a level of intuition. Mm. Good mm. reason I ask because Sometimes people are confused in in between where they have good intention but they don't actually uh, pursue their intention. Yep. 100%. They just yep. give maybe 50, 70%. It's called uh, limiting beliefs. So I if see. you deal with these limiting beliefs and self-doubt, Mm-mm. a lot of people don't feel that they are they are able to handle it or they're Mm-mm. able to manage it or they feel they, they doubt that they have the capable capabilities to, to, to solve it Mm-mm. it's not true if it's presented to you yeah. that means the universe is giving you the, the opportunity. opportunity to do that wow yeah, yeah. well said beautiful yeah. I definitely agree with that yeah, yeah like 100% yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, what made you want to, to pick up tarot card reading so when I was very young my father had a book on um, on on, uh, on cartomancy mm-hmm. so it's the, using cards to read right and I was that time I was maybe about six or seven or eight years old I think and I started um, pouring through it and I was like um, a teenager I was still reading it and I grew interested in it but I didn't pick it up I didn't pick tarot cards till maybe about um, say about 15 years ago or something and I learned it through a teacher and I grew so interested in it I started learning from several teachers and I I love it it's just a whole daily practice of, 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 of you know um kind of um of of playing with the cards and, and 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 understanding the trouble is people don't understand what it is they think people like uh, like myself we are fortune tellers and that's not true we mm. don't tell fortunes and we don't predict futures mm. what we do is we lay out advice and 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 options for people to um uh make their own decisions to influence their own outcome mm. i never believe in fate i always believe that you're a master of your own destiny yeah mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's true though. Yeah, is is there a particular card that one should never get? Like you know, that no. card means something bad. So, all seventy eight cards. Seventy eight. You, I mean, there's good and there's bad cards. I mean, there's in fact there's no good or bad cards. They're just cards, and they tell you a story. Mm. They help you with a narrative. And to me, all the cards are great because they lend a a, a, a positive as well as a, neg- uh, a positive advice to a negative situation and vice versa. They even warn you about negative situations that you shouldn't get into. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, wow. Have you ever done like your, your, your own tarot card reading? Never. Has somebody ever done it for you? In fact, this is my first time I, that I encounter about tarot card. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Where have you been, man? Yeah, I'm, I've been in a cave, bro. I know. <laughs> I, I hope you have a nice cave. Yeah. Uh, what do you think 2021 looks like in general for, for everyone? Okay. Um, so, if you were to calculate 2021, right? Mm-hmm. So, let's look, look at 2 plus mm-hmm. 2 plus 1. That's 5. So, it's a universal number 5. Mm. We are in the universal year 5. And 5 is about change. Okay, so it's about movement. It's about adaptability. So I know we've come through a tumultuous year in, in um, uh, 2020. And to me, that's a year where the structures 
are in question. Mm. The whole foundation stones of what we believe in have been in question. So in 2021, I think it's a time where we challenge any outmoded uh, values and any any beliefs that no longer uh, that no longer stand the the the, the test of time. Mm. You know, for example, uh, one example is. Um, people who work out there in, in offices. I think the COVID period has shown us that you don't need to sit there from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. to get your job done. Yeah. You can do it anywhere and everywhere. Yeah. Right? Um, and I remember once asking an ex-boss, you know, you just done a renovation. What then? When we go back, when I see we won't have, we won't be 100% as step in, a, in, in, in the whole floor, no? uh, in the whole building because we're going back in groups, you yeah. know, I think, don't you think hot desking would be the right way to do it? Yeah. So that was a question I asked. Mm. And, and true enough, I think that's what they're thinking of. They're thinking of, you know, more agile, uh, uh, working um, more uh, ways. Now. Correct, yeah. mm. correct. So uh, five is about adapting to that, challenging that, um, flexibility. So it's also about expecting the unexpected. I feel that the worst is not over. I think, um, really? wow. I think it's still a, uh, sometime more. Uh, I hate to predict. I told you I don't like to predict because yeah, I, yeah. I, I, you know, COVID taught us never to predict anything. Mm. Um, but expect unexpected because you find that because of the situations that had happened before last year, um, that everyone's just kind of, you know, from a situation where we have been so restricted. We are now trying to think of creative ways mm. to do yeah. better things. So you find the creative ways to 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 do a, a, a an event, people are going online now. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, there are creative ways to run a wedding. I just came out from a wedding where there were three rooms of fifties. You know, wow. I remember it was a wedding at Halia. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and it, it's so different. Every, everyone's just trying to work within the confines of those restrictions, and that's called adaptability. So I think expect that uh, mm-hmm. in twenty twenty one. Nice. Talking about okay. expectation, right? Uh, prior to all this COVID thing, mm. before it we happened mm. in 2020, in fact, it happened 2019, in late 2019. Yep. Yeah. You yourself personally, do you kind of like sense it coming or you find kind of like, maybe like you sense that, 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 that negative energy coming, that wave coming? Uh, not really, but mm. you know, in 2019, because that universal year number is a four, mm. Um, I think most pneumologists will tell you that um, it's a year where, um, you know, it's a, it's four is a number of foundation and structure. I see. Mm-hmm. And, and, and pl- lots of planning, lots of planning. Mm-hmm. So we did not, I did not expect COVID. Mm-hmm. You know, I only know that the top line is, is all about structure, foundation and planning. And mm-hmm. true enough, we found that all the structures and, and foundations were, were, were being created and recreated you know, because of the COVID situation. Mm. If you notice, the governments and, and companies were planning and replanning. Um, intensively. Intensively. Yeah. yeah you know, correct. to respond mm. to the whole COVID situation. Yeah. So I think the wow. whole energy of the fall was quite intense of uh, in 2019. So in 2021, I think with, uh, like I said, you know, to expect the unexpected, I think that is probably would be the right train of thought to, to, to go with, mm. you know. Yeah. So, do you think people need to be prepared for things getting worse, or? I always like to get prepared. Mm, yeah, true. I don't believe in guarantees. Yeah, but it's a nice thought to have, though, that this year will be better. I mean, that's change. what I hope for everyone. You know, mm, yeah. we, we can only hope for the change. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah. I think the good thing is it's made us a bit more resilient. Mm. Um, and you know, five being a number of, of change a number of movement you know is a, a number of moving forward you know so we we shouldn't get stuck there mm-hmm. we yeah. should be moving forward you know and being be adaptable to change if the currents get rough we just learn how to to shift the sails a little bit mm. yeah I, th- I think everyone has had to learn how to adapt yeah yeah because it's the new normal yeah. right everything is is different and uh Unfortunately, there are those that have not been able to to adapt for some reason. But you know that that's just on them. Yeah. Is it yeah. is it because they 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 aren't able to move on? Or probably, uh, before COVID happened, they are living the high life. 
maybe uh, could be and, and yeah that, that, and, and, and they are very comfortable with that with, with that realm or that zone of yeah. theirs yeah. one example mm. is uh, some people in covid who were made redundant Yeah. yeah, I've read for a few of them already, and, and I can tell you some of my clients who have been made redundant. They, they, you know, it's very hard for them to to kind of move forward from there because they their mindset is I've been working in this environment, getting a salary for a long, 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 long time. Mm. They they can't think out of the box to say like, hey, should I do something else? Should I reevaluate my goals? Yeah. Should I um um maybe become a entrepreneur mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. so i um look at skills future and reskill myself and and do something else and yeah. change my career path these are options for them which is available mm-hmm. and frankly it's a no brainer but a lot of them are so stuck in their ways they they they, they don't think it and that's the truth um it's a comfort zone right yeah. uh, that they're playing within but the great thing is in 2021 We have a challenge at comfort zone in order to progress, right? Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I, I'll be honest. You know, I um, have found it kind of difficult to adapt to do something else because mm. I the last show I emceed was in Feb of this year. Okay. Right? So mm. um, yeah, I've always wanted to emcee in Bangkok, and then mm. I, I did it. And then when I came back, that was like when when COVID was getting out of hand. Yeah. And I remember all the flights being delayed. Finally, I got back, but I've not emceed again, and it's something I miss. But I'm I'm also like hoping that somehow, you know, like this year I'll be able to get back on on stage. But I kind of doubt that will happen. But you know, there's that hope. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And then so I'm not like trying. I'm doing other stuff as well, but I'm not. It's not like wholeheartedly. Yeah. True. Yeah. Mm. Except for this podcast, you know. Yeah. We put in a lot of work yeah. into it. Yeah. But mm. every other thing, you know, it's it's not. Like my heart is not totally you know, in it. You know, uh, I mean, when we look back to 2020 and then moving on to 2021, where Joanna mentioned that 2021 is all about change. Yeah. Right? It reminded me about one book that I used to read before uh, when I was around 18 years old. This book uh, called Who Moved My Cheese. Oh, I don't yes. know if you all know this yes, book. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Noel is not a reader. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> okay, the 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 gist of the the, the gist of the story is it uh, is that they stood uh, mice lah. Eh? So the one mouse, uh, he's so comfortable with his cheese, and one day that cheese is gone. Right. But the other mouse decided to go and chase the cheese around the maze. So mm. in the end, the second mouse succeed, where the first mouse still stuck there. Okay. You no, know, in his, he he don't want to even move out. From from his uh, and go and search for the new cheese or whatever cheese where the the cheese that has been that has been uh, uh, taken away from him. Mm-hmm. So the moral of story here, I think, going back to 2020 and 20, 2021 now, is that we have to adapt to change. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And yep. it's very spot on where Joanna mentioned about change. Yeah. 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 So one example is um, in 2020. Mm. So I was made redundant in 2020. Mm. And of, obviously, you know, I have two choices. Either to sit down and wallow in that redundancy and say, okay, I'm going to I'm going to just, you know, sit here and, you know, keep fighting for a job. And if no job, I just be so depressed. Mm. Or I will reevaluate my goals. And I thought, look, I'm 51. Mm. You know, I have got 25 years of experience behind me in communications. Why don't I start my own company? Yeah. So I started my own company, Bravery Communications, mm. um, that does PR communications, marketing work. Mm. And immediately when I, my mind, remember we talk about how we manifest positivity once we set an intention. The minute I did that, I landed two clients. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. So that's what I mean. You know, once you are able to close that door, you are able to open another one. With a positive mindset, so mm. Noel, I know how difficult it is for you. Simply, I can explain that because you are born on 14 November, am I right? Yep. So you are character number five, and you know this year, the Universal Year Five, has even more particular impact for people with the number five in their in their numbers, right? So mm. character five people are all about movement and change. Yeah, you are about you are a catalyst of change. Okay, and people like you, you you like to multitask. You need to multitask. You you can't sit still. Okay, and uh, you need to do things that stimulate you intellectually. Mm. When you find that um, uh, there are there are changes, the things that you love to do and you can't do it, it impacts you even more. 
Mm. Okay, you and it, the energy becomes more intense. But you, if you understand how to leverage the strength of your numbers, and that is the adaptability, you will find that you will be so successful this year. Right. Because this year, if you can let go of that clinging on to oh, I need to MC in Bangkok, I need to, I mm. need to go back to what I used to do, and start reevaluating your goals now, and say that what can I do to lift the game, change it a little bit, and make sure that you know. Um, I still leverage my strengths to do what I do best to touch others. I tell you, you'll be so successful. Right. Mm. So, do you have any advice what I should do? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, like lost in the lalang, really, man. No, I, I think I think what uh, Joanna mean right is that you have to really dig deep mm. inside yes. you, and only you yourself can know your next move or your next path. Yeah. Uh, am I right to say yep. that, Joanna? Yeah. Yeah. And you know um, You are Great at um, I can see you Great at Learning at, you, know, you, you love to read And learn Well you Okay you tell me You're not a reader But you love to <laughs> no, read that's what And you learn said. things Okay <laughs> I can see you Learning things That you enjoy Spiritual stuff Especially yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you like to Share mm. it with others mm. Okay yeah. To me The teaching Supporting Mentoring Advising Counseling Peace Starts coming to my head Mm. That's something which I think you should do more. Yeah. There are a lot of people who would love to learn from you. Maybe you should set up little workshops of people who can actually build on their intuition and build on their 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 on, on what you do. I mean, mm. for you, you 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 do what you do best because um, you do have a level of intuition. Yeah. You do have that uh, sensitivity, mm. and right now there are a lot of young people who look at you and go like, "Hey, you know, I." I'm also sensitive, but you know, like I have self doubt. I don't know what to do. You yeah. know, I I like to. If I can help, why can't I help in a way? So, why don't you use that from a uh, uh, from from the basis to start with mm-hmm. and look at running little online workshops? Sure, I yeah, that mm. sounds good. I have yeah. a very quick question. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I I have to interject. Oh my god! A lot of time because it's it's very interesting to talk to mm-hmm. Joanna. You're behaving like like a kebab, man. I'm sorry. I, I'm I'm just dwelling here, lah, <laughs> <laughs> waiting for for her for her uh, kind uh, advice and guidance. Mm. Yeah. Okay, uh, man. Definitely, when we talk about helping others, right? That kind of positive energy was sucking into you. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. But sometimes people might be quite reluctant. Right in terms of helping others, mm. maybe due to certain intention or certain uh, go back to intention or certain uh, barrier that they have within them. I mean, how do they need to actually break that break that hindrance in order for them to receive all that positive energy? Because again, when you said that we need to help more people, then we can get more positive energy. Yeah. Then, uh, like like you said, more 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 good things will come into your yeah. life, right? Yeah. So how how does that first step? Is very crucial for uh, a, a, a person to actually break that barrier. Okay. Mm. The first thing is when you say that that's not my problem. Oh. Okay. So some some people will will go like that's not my problem. My mm. problem is my issues, my family, my work, my whatever. Mm-hmm. I think you got to break that barrier of that's not my problem because as long you are in a community, you are you're not living as an island. Okay, you're mm. not living alone. Mm-mm. If you are living in a community and you touch lives every day, people come in and out of your life for a purpose. If oh. you're not using your skills to actually do something to support them, mm. then it's such a waste. Mm-mm. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So when you say that it's not my problem, is that person selfish in in, yeah, in, in certain be, ways? It could be. It could mm. be selfish. It could be fear, like you know, like some people go like don't kepo lah, don't kepo. You know, some ah, of them go that right. Yeah, yeah, true, true, true. Yeah. And 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 sometimes you know, it's not that you want to kepo. It's that the 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 fellow just come to you and they, they cross it cross paths with you. Yeah. So yeah. you don't just leave that fellow hanging, you know, hanging there. But on the flip side, now, hmm. just addressing this, okay? Because I got a lot of students who come to me and say, "Oh, I feel so exhausted and depressed," because a lot of these in uh, intuitive souls, my 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 students who who kind of have been supporting and advising and doing what I do because I teach them to read, you see, hmm. um, and they absorb a lot of negative energy. So yeah. pe- people like us, you know, um, who read uh, professionally, only when people have problems come to us, ma. Yeah, right? true. You have no problems, you don't. So um, when you absorb the energy, you take on somebody else's energy, you you do feel the negativity. So the best thing to do is always to meditate, ground yourself, and always visualize a white light around you, so that you can always protect yourself from negative energy that's around you. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. Yeah, that's I, I, I think that's great advice. Yeah. Yeah. Really great advice. Yeah. Mm. Um, in all your years, you've been doing your your tarot card readings, or um, have any of them like one of them stand out to you for you that you know you felt was was either frightening or or bizarre? Um, well, one of them was um, I was reading for this lady, um, and she, she was her okay. So she was going through a legal issue. And usually I wouldn't read about legal issue. I'm not a lawyer, right? But her whole family was in such a flux and conflict because of whether to sell a house or not or, or something and, and disseminate the property because mm. her sister died. Mm. Okay. And immediately when she came to me and she was telling me about this legal issue and should I sell this house? And I said, who does this house belong to? My sister. I didn't know her sister died. Okay. And I felt such a very bad headache, so painful. Um, and remember I told you about absorbing energy? Yeah. So painful and I had to stop halfway and I asked her, I said, look, I want to find out how did your sister die? Is this something to do with the head? She says, yeah, yeah, brain cancer. Wow. Mm, you know? So I'm absorbing the sister's energy, right? Mm. So I said, I said, okay, so as long as I know that, you know, I'm going to step back and I'm going to read for the situation of what where your what your sister wants you to do, mm. because I don't want to get into the whole quagmire of that conflict. Okay, so what the sister wanted to do was actually not sell the place, but to give her the house. You mm. know, but the mother wants to split the property, want to sell the property and split the the, the cost. Right. But the sister, or rather the sister who has passed wanted to give this younger sister the house and let her live in it because mm. she was unmarried and everything, right? So, I think that was the advice I finally gave her. She has to deal with it. Lah. How they dealt with it, I'm not sure. But that was the advice I, I, I kind of channeled for the sister. Right, right. And then there's one more, right, that you told me about the, the mother that committed suicide. Yes, yeah. yes. So, Ava. Ava, she's in Frankfurt, actually. She lives in Frankfurt and she wanted to move out of um, Frankfurt to live in Paris. She lived in her family home for the longest time. Okay, and um, I remember when I was uh, reading for her, the question was, should I move to Paris, uproot and move to Paris, sell the house, right? Mm. That was the question. I didn't know her background and everything. But I felt so much angst, anxiety, stress, and my whole um, solar plexus, my heart chakra and my throat chakra was really feeling um, very tight. Okay, And that was when I realized something was quite not very right with Ava uh, or the background of Ava. And I started doing going into um, the process of visioning. That's another thing that I love to do, visioning. When I do visioning, I like to draw on a vision board. Mm-hmm. So when I draw a vision board, what I drew was I, 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 I draw a stick figure and backs, you know. So I, I saw this man at the door with backs. The next thing, I, I, I drew a sort of like a clock tower, okay, mm. a clock tower. Um, and then I drew a train, okay. And I drew a small window, like a room, but a small window. It looks like as small as that clock, okay. And I showed that drawing to Ava all the drawings were Ava and I said, I'm drawing all this, it doesn't make sense, you know. Um, and I feel very tight. I feel like I'm being kept into a house and I'm I'm trapped and I'm trying to release myself and go out. I feel depressed, anxious, and I'm trying to cling on and I keep on, I'm, I'm keeping uh, 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 um, to find myself, you know. And she said to me, she says, oh yeah, yeah, my mother has a mental condition. Mm. My mother has died already. She has a mental condition because my father left her to um, join his lover in London. Hmm. Okay. Um, so my mother had been very depressed and, you know, hardly could put food and uh, on the table for me. So I, I lived with her. One day my mother um, committed suicide in that house. Hmm. But she continued to live in that house, uh, Ava. And she's born that whole inner child issue. Uh, that's plagued her life for so long because she's gone. She herself got, she's depressive and uh, she has got mental health conditions and all that. And finally, when I told her that 
a lot of her conditions is to do with her past that she needs to release and she needs to cut the cord of negativity to her the to the situation with that her mother and the father had experienced. It started to release all the negativity for her because she started to get aware of it and she mm-hmm. started, she started she started to go through this inner child healing. Okay, so the visioning uh, uh, board actually helped her uh, to tell me the story. Um, and link her condition to her past and it also helped her to sell that house to move on to London mm. oh, she did not she did not leave because she's, she was worried that by selling the house she's actually um, letting her dead mother down mm. yeah. oh wow yeah spooky man yeah. wow, wow. Uh, that, that was a very interesting um, situation and probably one of my most fulfilling uh, clients I've, I've, I've read for but that no doubt is the most fulfilling but it's not the most Breeze for you, man. Man, yeah. definitely you. It, it take a toll on you, right? It's yes. It was. It really well. It kind of. Um, it took a lot from me because mm. you know, for me, I was also searching for an answer. Mm-hmm. You know, it was ever. It was never me providing a solution. It was ever and myself exploring a solution together. Mm. You know, and I, I like I've always told people that I don't feel I'm talented. The only reason that I could do what I could do mm. is because that that gift comes from my faith you know mm-hmm. and my 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 true intent to want to help her yeah yeah mm-hmm. oh. just a question did you bring along your tarot cards yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> wow you think we should do something yeah you can we can we can <laughs> but how how big can my question be because i don't know what to ask i've been thinking like last few days if you do bring your cards what can i ask you and i don't really know what i should ask you mm. If you ask me a generic question, you get a generic answer. If you ask me a focused question, you get a focused advice. <laughs> wow. Okay. Hmm. Wow. What do you think I should uh, ask? I don't know. What What do you desire most right now at this? <sighs> you, you know what? Um, <laughs> what help do you need? What's well, actually what's the most pressing issue for you now? Work. Work is the most pressing. You know. Like, you know, I've got um, a nine-month-old daughter and I want to mm. provide um, the best I can for for my wife and my daughter. Mm. And then sometimes I feel very uh, defeated. I feel that I'm not doing enough, you know? Mm-hmm. Like this, yeah, like the end of uh, December, I felt like I wasn't doing enough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of the work that you do is because uh, that you feel that it's not doing enough is because of the COVID situation. Um, yeah, you know, um, like s- things have been kind of tough, right? You you know that. Mm-hmm. And then just when you think like things are getting better, and then after you go through this whole um, roller coaster again, and then so that was rough. Uh huh. We're getting a bit emotional. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Um, Yeah, you have been through. Remember, I told you you've been through a very tough couple of years. Yeah, very tough couple of years. Can you cut the cards for me with your left hand? Okay. So the first thing I will kind of read for you is um, where you are, are now in a moment. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So if you see, I don't know. If the, They can yeah. see it. Yeah. Can see it. Okay. So I, I think they can, right? Can. can you see yeah. it? Okay. So the two of pentacles. Mm-hmm. I'm reading from the um, Hanson Roberts um, uh, tarot deck, and the two of pentacles tells me, yes, you are struggling with number one. You are trying to juggle the the burden of commitments mm. financially. So you okay. can see that like, the guy is juggling the money. Yeah. Okay? And the commitments and the priorities as well. The second thing is. To me, I think it's also about the choices. Do you remember I told you um, that you had to make a choice to let go of something to gain something? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So sometimes the two of uh, pentacles tells me that yeah. you're trying to make choices for mm-hmm. yourself. Oh, sorry to interject you. Uh, maybe you can show again. Oh, I zoom in now. Uh, can I you think more, more to your right. Yeah. My right? Yeah. Uh, ah, okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Right. Nice. Um, and the next card... Okay, mm-hmm. it's a tower card. Can you see that? Mm, the tower card. Tower okay, card. a tower card represents change. Mm. Okay, and this is the year of change. Right. Okay? Mm, yeah. The tower, you know, is lambasted by a lot of um, fire. You know, lightning. 
and you can see people are falling off it. You can see um, that it's, a, it's breaking apart and crumbling. Mm. So it looks scary, but yeah. actually it's not. It's basically telling you that you need to kind of tear down the structures of what you're doing right now. Okay, let go of all these outmoded uh, 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 things that you're thinking about your whole career and change it. Right. Okay. okay. You, you should take control. Don't wait for things to happen. Don't wait for the COVID period to be over. Don't wait for the vaccine to be mm-hmm. A-OK for things to happen and go like, yes, I can MC in Bangkok. That, yeah. That, mm-hmm. It'll be too late. Okay. That, this is a time to tear down everything, restructure the whole business and say that, you know, I, uh, I should do something else or do, do something better. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, okay. in a more creative way. Mm. Okay. Positive change. The world is a great card. I love this card. Okay. The world. Okay. Sorry. More time. Yeah. yeah. The world is, is always representing um, positive change and almost like something, some, you know, you are going to be moving out of what you have been doing mm. um, currently in the old way to do something better that's going to bring a lot more ch- positivity to your family. Right. And, and I know you, you have a daughter, you have a wife, you, 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 you told me that you, you, are doing everything for them. I can tell you, it's because of them, you will be doing a lot more creative stuff. Okay. okay? That's going to help families. Mm. Okay. The Seven of Pentacles, I love this card as well. Seven of Pentacles is telling me that you need to stop planning now. Right. Okay. Invest your time and energy only what only in where that reaps the most rewards. Don't quite try to do everything. Mm. Don't be a... <laughs> You know, don't be a, what do they call it? Um, uh, jack of all trades. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And master of none. Okay. The queen of cups, I love it. Your wife. Your wife. How mm. wonderful. She's your queen of cups. She's supporting you so much. Mm-hmm. And she's holding your hands. Don't be afraid that you are disappointing her. You are not disappointing her. Okay. If your inertia and your fears and anxiety would be a disappointment to her. But if you were to hold her hand together and say, let's just take the leap of faith together, she will be standing by you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's okay. for sure. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> does that help you? Yeah, it does. <laughs> oh. I suddenly make people cry. <laughs> I'm reading, but okay. Wow. Yeah. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> what a start to the year, huh? Good start. Yeah, so I, start. I think what is good is right now you take a whole look at all your businesses and what you do. Yeah. Then you go like, what can I, what should I zone in on? Yeah, because I'm really doing a lot of things, yes. man. Like a lot. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know that, right? And then yeah. I had like burnout recently, the cholesterol thing and the yeah. high blood pressure. And Your health is you, the most important thing, man. Do you know that? I didn't want to tell you this, but in a taxi, I was just telling him, I said, I don't know how open I need to tell him. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, because um, I told you about the, first and foremost about letting go of something. That's one. Number two, making choices to make a difference to your life, okay? Your health, you need to put in more effort to, to take care of your health, yeah. okay? And I can tell you, once you start reading up about your health and, 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 and high blood pressure, you have high blood pressure? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I have that and then yeah. my, my cholesterol is like yeah. double what it's supposed to be. Yeah, so once you start reading up on that and start to build your, on your wellness, mm-hmm. I tell you, you will be able to use the information to help others who are in the same situation as you. Mm. Okay. Because everybody is like you, you know, we, all of us are into hustle, right? Yeah. So we want to multitask. Mm. Okay. And yeah. you are, you are the king of hustles. <laughs> okay. So when you want to multitask, you want to do everything. I can tell you, it's not possible. Things don't, you know, the universe is teaching us things don't have to be, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be so hard. You know, as long as you just, you know, go with your gifts and go with the flow and, and have the knowingness that, you know, um, that you need to kind of restructure everything mm. and just focus on something that you do best. Just one mm. thing that you do best. Yeah. I, I, I think um, like what, what I know about myself so far is that I, with this paranormal channel, right, Ghost Files Singapore, mm. Uh, a lot of people have come up to me and they say that I've inspired them. Mm. And, and that was never the intention, you know. We, we didn't start this to go like, oh, let's inspire people, mm. right? We started this for, for the sake of 
of having a paranormal show. Mm. Yeah. And then I meet people and people message, they they email and you know they reach out. So I, I think that's something that that I definitely want to do. That's why yes. I, I studied life coaching. I, mm. I did my diploma in modern psychology. You wow. Know. Yeah. Okay. That's why I mean, see, mm. I can see counseling, advising, supporting, teaching. Yeah. Mm. That's what I can see. Yeah. So maybe you should you should uh, leverage on that direction. Leverage on that, yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> nice. You know why not? Because people are very appreciative mm-hmm. towards you. And uh, for you, the founder of GFS, right? They really feel your sincerity in all your content. So again, just now, we have to go back to what we discussed just now. Yeah. It's about intention. Yeah. You you set out to, to, to do this with with the purest, purest of intention. Purest of intention. I mean, mm. this is the outcome, man. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well said. <laughs> no, no, I think you, you, you. I mean, I, I, I. I this is what I can gather, lah. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm not trying to say. Anything. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Yeah. <laughs> but at least copy, ah. Huh? At least, at least, must banja me copy, yeah. <laughs> no, people already have. <laughs> people already have. Oh man. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Alright, let, let's take a break from this. We, and we, we haven't read uh, uh, comments from our from our uh, live audience now. Yeah, we got a lot of people yeah, watching. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've got Yazid, um, and then we've got Navin. Oh man, Navin, uh, also an MC. We've got uh, who else? No Mastura. I have a comment here by Ali Anwar. Mm-hmm. He mentioned that uh, this is the first time I've heard someone say "good as this." Beautiful. Yeah. I think he's, he's referring to Joanna's uh, oh, earliest, yeah. earliest uh, uh, advice on that. Mm, nice. Do you want to read any of the other comments? Uh, Rogaya Sapuan say, Wow, I feel like I'm watching Dr. Phil at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And uh, yeah, and uh, Chris Ho. Uh, hello, Chris. Hey, uh, Uh, mentioned that it rained the whole day and night on New Year's Day so it's okay too so that means he's referring to your tears mm. uh? he or she uh? she she, she. So hey, Chris is awesome man. sorry she, she's referring to your tears she bought us four coffees no eight wow is it eight or four thank you Chris hold on uh. I need, thank you I so need much. To, to double check this <laughs> I cannot get this wrong Noel <laughs> no, she bought eight. She bought yeah, eight. she bought wow. eight. And then before that, we had a uh, anonymous person that bought us eight as well. Wow. Yeah. So if you guys want to buy us a copy, yeah, uh, it's, the link is in the description below. Yeah. Okay. So let's move on to the other segment. It's called Paranormal Popcorn. It's by my wife Gabby. Mm. Yeah, she did this earlier today because she watched this movie called The Ruins. Mm. I, I love it. It's on Netflix. Here we go. Hey everyone, so this is the very first Paranormal Popcorn of the year. So I want to wish each and every one of you a very, very happy new year and I hope that 2021 brings you lots of success and happiness. Now today I'm wearing this very special, very awesome Haunted Hour t-shirt. If you want to get one for yourself, please check out the GFS Facebook page and you can find out where you can get your own. That's my plug for the, for my segment. So anyway, the movie that I chose to review is called The Ruins. And I chose it because 2020 was kind of a year that was all over the place, you know. People felt like their plans were ruined and some of their lives were in ruins as well. So it kind of called out to me and I was like, hmm, let's see where this goes. It's not a very new movie, actually. It was released in 2008, so that's quite a while ago. And it's directed by this guy called Carter Smith. And this guy... He's actually a fashion photographer, but somehow he ended up directing this horror film and he was recommended to do it by Steven Spielberg. So that's a pretty big name drop, right? And the story of The Ruins is based on the novel of the same name, written by Scott Smith, who also has the same name as Carter Smith, but they're not related. So anyway, the, the premise of The Ruins is about this Mayan ancient Mayan temple. And it's about people doing whatever it takes to survive the environment, conquer the environment as well, and just stay alive. So without giving too much away, it's kind of a creature feature type of film, but I won't say whether it's like a monster or a ghost. I won't give too much away, but there are elements of the supernatural in it. And on hindsight, I mean, after watching it, I feel like I wish that they had given more of a backstory for these elements, but it still tells the story effectively. So I think they did quite quite a good job. 
and the novel itself was so liked by Stephen King that he claimed it's the best horror novel of the new century. Now that is a very big statement to make for for someone like Stephen King and I am a big fan of his so if he likes it then I automatically like it, right? I mean, I'm just biased that way. So anyway, um, the interesting thing about this story is that it's set in Mexico but it was filmed in Australia. So when you look at the shots, it's very hard to tell the difference. Like if you don't know that it's in Australia, it really looks as convincing as it can be to be in Mexico. And while they were filming, it was actually really, really cold. But obviously, as we know, the climate in Mexico is is warm and, and humid, right? So in order to give that illusion of, of the actors being all hot and sweaty, they had to be sprayed with olive oil and water. So I find that pretty gross, but you know, you got to do whatever it takes to make the movie, right? So anyway, that's one one trivia tidbit I can give you about like behind the scenes. Um, besides that, I think they did a really good job with practical effects, a lot more so than, than CGI. And sometimes I also find that CGI is quite overused. And if it's not done well or if it's done quite cheaply, then it just looks really bad. And you might as well just not use it. And I also think that you have more kind of creative uh, allowance when it comes to practical effects because you can play with people's imagination you can use shadows you can use sounds and this movie is also like that it's like a bit of a mind effort if i can say that like certain scenes are gory as well but they don't overdo the gore like some other films like i won't mention because in case you guys are fans of those films but uh they did the gore theme very well as well uh it's rated r21 so if you are under the age of 21 you've been warned but if you feel like still watching it go for it um and besides that the character development of the main cast like there's no one really like a-list celebrities actors and actresses but they do a very decent job of developing their characters in the film and it's not a long film it's about an hour 30 minutes but eventually you start to see like okay this guy is 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 outstanding as the hero character and this girl's gonna be is she gonna be the final girl or is she gonna you know suffer along the way you don't know so that much is a bit of a unpredictability which is quite refreshing and i would say that i'm quite happy that i picked it as my first movie of the year so if you see it on netflix check it out it's called the ruins i'll see you guys next time bye oh that's my wife nice <laughs> nice nice yeah well, i'd love for you to meet her one day hmm. yeah I, I think that that'd be really awesome and wow. then you get to, to, meet her. to meet mali as well yes. yeah mm. yeah uh, so much positivity in in that little child, that little baby. Yes. Yeah, just always smiling. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I can't complain. Um, yeah, so I, I I think we've on to a very good start for twenty twenty one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did things a little differently, and we get a lot of good advice yeah. from Joanna. Yeah, man, Joanna's awesome. Yeah. If if people want to to engage your services, how do they go about in doing so? Okay, they can um well first check out my website sungoddesstarot dot com. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, my IG handle at sungoddesstarot. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. do you have to meet up with them like face to face or? I do all my readings via WhatsApp video call. Oh, cool. Um, mm. And also via emails, but a lot of WhatsApp video calls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so then there's a, the interaction. You get yes, to see them and right. all. That's right. Ah, so I, I think that's that's easy for people, uh, so they can do yeah. it from home or the Convenient office. Or right. them. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I've done it even before um, on a train ride uh, between um, Edinburgh and London. Right, I kind of uh, had a client call. How me. long? How long was that train train ride? It was a four hour train ride. So thankfully, wow. I had a one hour in between to to squeeze to, in. Yeah, to squeeze in before. Oh, nice! Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah, we definitely post your links as well. Sure. Um, After this, yeah, we can, post. We can the, post the link sure. right in the video description below. Okay, okay. Cool. There, there'll, there'll be Indra. Indra will do that. Yes, okay. Indra is so helpful. <laughs> 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 Mr. Handy. <laughs> okay, guys, we I think we have overshot the one hour, right? Yeah, man, it's been a good. It mean, it's been a good discussion. It's been a good uh, episode, man. Yeah, I mean, uh, we we have we are very grateful to have Joanna in our studio today. Tonight. Yeah. yeah. Th- thanks for having me. Hey, yeah. no yeah. worries. That yeah. was fun. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Is this your first time doing like this kind of yes, concept I've, podcast? Uh, yes. And you know, definitely the first time. So that was good fun. Yeah. It mm. won't be the last. We will definitely have you back on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For sure. Maybe next time you can do a reading for Indra. <laughs> I'll do that right after this. But don't, don't worry. I won't cry at you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> 
whatever, bro. <laughs> no, 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 sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I want you guys to know, right? If you're if you have been going through a tough time, yeah, uh, and if you were to think to yourself like, oh my god, like 2021 is not going to be any better, then it's not going to be better, right? So you you really got to be positive somehow, yeah. right? You got to find that in you, and um, yeah, it will Strife, work out, yeah, yeah, because a lot of things in life is not easy, but it's worth fighting for, mm. right? Um, if you don't have a particular skill and you want to pick it up, right? I think now it's so easy because you have all the the, the options online, yeah. right? Uh, unless you want to learn to ride a unicycle, then that's different uh, because you have to go buy one. I think it's good. <laughs> it goes back to your drive. La. Yeah, exactly. You got to mm. have that, that drive. Yeah. Like like what we witnessed today, tonight, right? I mean, you yourself, Noel, you have a very high, high drive. How is it? How is it? I mean... I mean, lots of energy lots of energy yeah. in terms of your drive yeah but it's just where, need to to redirect that energy and to focus on on like one thing yeah, mm, yeah right. that's that where today. you are correct at this current moment right now in your life yeah with the pure purity of your drive la. okay yeah, yeah I, I agree mm. okay okay so let's wrap this up Yo. Um, once again, we got a campaign we just started is called Buy Me A Coffee. The link is right below. Um, we've had two individuals that have been awesome. They bought eight coffee. Thank feet. you. Yeah, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Chris Ho and also the anonymous person. Why anonymous? Uh? I don't know. Like some people are like or Some that. people want to do charity. They don't want to be known. Uh. Yeah. Or they just want to do good. Like just now we mentioned do good. But yes. she just want to feel good, but don't want to show off. Exactly. But I'm, not say- I'm not saying that people who said um, who mentioned their name showing off Noah yeah I'm, I'm not saying this but I'm just saying that maybe he just want to remain anonymous lah. yeah I, I totally agree the purity of intention yes sir <laughs> thank you so much Joanna for <laughs> all your for all your kind uh, guidance and uh, advice for tonight thanks for having me <laughs> yeah, you're welcome <laughs> okay yes. my name is Noel Boyd my name is Indra Sahib and you've been watching Haunted Hour Live on Facebook yeah see you soon Good night. <laughs>